when I took over animation, it was a dying division of the company, TV animation, it was a dying division of the company. And, uh, uh, but there were hundreds of talented people working there. There were these animators who would all, they'd all be locked behind their doors and be listening to music. And, uh, and I, by this point, I'd become a fairly heavy art collector. So I was already interested in visual culture. Uh, and I'd always loved animation anyway. I mean, I was a huge, I, I wrote, one of my college theses was on uh, Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote, which is why you see, uh, uh, where you see that up there, which I think was, to this day, I, I think is one of the greatest, one of the greatest, greatest works of American art made in the last century. And uh, uh, right up there with the greatest jazz or the greatest, any, you know, the greatest movies. And uh, uh, so I've always loved animation. I've always loved its potential to express things and everything else. And particularly time since I was interested in art, it got even more interesting for me. And, uh, you know, these guys, these kids would come in there and they'd get excited about something. They'd pitch you something and they'd start drawing on your wall, you know, and, and it just didn't happen in the network TV business. You know, it was all very corporate and uh, you know, it was all like a lot of depressed Jews and, and uh, you know, people who've been beaten up by the network system for a long time. The animators weren't really beaten up. They, they, they were kind of countercultural and a little weird and kind of geeky and... and uh, uh, and I really loved working with them, and uh, and probably also a lot of really fresh voices, which is always they were exciting. fresh voices. They had their own ideas, and they were genuinely funny, and and you know they were they were uh, an anarchic lot, and and uh, uh, you know this was still a studio that needed to produce things, uh, but there was no place to put these things that we produced anymore. What were we going to do with them? We owned no network. When ABC came around, uh, and we had Saturday Morning, now we had a network, and. Michael loved Saturday morning just as much as I did, if not more, because he had spent time as an executive in Saturday morning in his ABC days. Um, and, uh, uh, and so by that point, uh, I'd already, you know, there, there was a huge revival going on within the division. I'd taken some money and I had given some money to just seated projects that had no place to go ultimately, but we decided to make them anyway. So we decided to make a, uh, basically a fractured fairy tales. We'd find the funniest producers and the funniest writers we could find and have them do something. We did one with uh, the Three Little Pigs that Dan O'Shannon, who was a writer on Cheers, uh, had pitched me and we animated it and we had nowhere to put it. We just did it. We spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and, and you know, I'm sure if Michael had known, he wouldn't have appreciated it. But once I did it, I just, you know, they couldn't catch up with me. I was just, uh, so, um, uh, and we were doing a lot of that. Uh, and it was reviving the division because all of a sudden people felt like their stuff could get made. And that's really why I did it was I felt that, you know, you could sit there with thousands of or hundreds of talented animators and they were just sitting there at their desks, you know, drawing little doodles because their work wasn't going anywhere and they, they couldn't get anything made. And I thought, well, you know, if we don't have any place to make it, let's just make it. Um, it's worth a few hundred grand to, to do that. And so we did it. Um, and it did wonders for the morale in the division, and, uh, and then we, we, at the same time, we, they had, the division had released, um, Gary, my, my predecessor, had taken uh, four episodes of Aladdin, the TV show Aladdin, which was on running a syndica syndication, and he glued them together, and they sold it as a, uh, as a direct video release, as a sequel to the movie Aladdin, and it did phenomenally well, phenomenally well, and I thought, well, that, that's actually a great business. Why, you know, why can't we do tons of stuff like that, direct to video? And uh, so I, I approved, you know, a whole like 10 or 15 scripts going into development, one of which is a sequel to Aladdin, another one is Lion King and all these, uh, ba Pocahontas, basically every movie that Disney had ever made, uh, Lady and the Tramp, uh, you, know, you name it, we, we were in development on the, on the direct to video sequel.